What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and this is a really fun and exciting surprise for y'all, okay? <laughs> and I'm excited for this because this is near and dear to my heart. This one means a lot to me. One of my best friends, Ingrid Best, is here. Thank you. It's good and to be here. Ingrid, I've talked to you before on The Breakfast Club, right? Mm -hmm. And at that point, you um, have managed partnerships for... Uh, for Bacardi with Duce, you've managed the partnership with Diageo for Ciroc and Deleon, and now you're managing Ingrid Best, okay? Because you have your own wine that just launched. Actually, you can pre-order it today. Mm -hmm. Yes, pre-order today on ReserveBar.com. We're so excited to be launching iBest Wines. It's been a labor of love. You know, I've called you many a days and many a nights. Um, and it really is a dream come true. So I'm just excited for everyone to be able to try something that I've poured my whole heart into. And so what I love about this is you going on this journey has me learning a lot about this industry. So let's talk about where it all started, because the spirits industry is not one that has always been favorable to black women. Mm -hmm. Right. And for you as somebody that how long have you been in the industry period? Over 20 years. Over 20 years. Yeah. Okay, so let's start at the beginning of the I Best Wines journey because you had no idea that this is where we would end up, you know, over yeah. 20 years later. But what was your first job in spirits? So my very first job, I was an ambassador, mm -hmm. and I launched a small rum brand for Diageo. Okay. And I launched it in San Francisco, New York, and Miami, and it was my very first time ever doing anything in spirits. I had come from doing street promotions and I loved it. I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. And I took a lot of the things that I did during that time of street promotions because a lot of it is storytelling and relationships. Mm -hmm. And I was able to apply it and I did well. And they were like, this girl is killing it. I took a quick break. I went to go work for Vitamin Water. A lot mm -hmm. of people don't know that. I didn't know that either. Yep, I took <laughs> Shame a quick on me. break. And I went to go work for Vitamin Water, and water was cool. I could, I know how to sell water, too. But I got a call from Diageo saying, we've always wanted you to work for us, and we have a role for you. And that role specifically was a sales and marketing role. And at the time, I was like, sales? I don't want to do sales. But it was actually the best thing I could have ever done because fast forward 20 years later, there's not anything I don't know how to do when it comes to just b building a brand, marketing a brand, everything selling a brand um that's, that's where i started that is a valuable lesson and i want to touch on that because for some reason when you had your first job in spirits working at diageo they saw something in you that made them say we would like for you to come back yeah. so for people out there who are just getting started in their industry or maybe don't even know what they want to do what kind of advice would you give them when it comes to uh your first job like things that you did that you feel like should be applied to make you stand out yeah i would say find what you love so even in your first job, there's going to be something that you're like, this is the part of the work that I, I'm doing that I love. And for me, I realize like I really just love connecting with people and mm -hmm. telling stories. And so I would get immersed in these brand stories and I knew how to then go tell those stories to other people. So I would say find what it is that you love about what you're doing. And if you don't love it and you have an opportunity to go find what you love, depending on your situation, go find it. Right. Yeah, you got to yeah. go find it. And another thing I want to touch on, a lot of times I've had people ask me, well, you know, I have kids, and how can I do what I'm doing when I want to follow my passion, follow my dreams, but I also have a child. Mm -hmm. And is somebody going to look at me differently if I, you know, if I have yeah. a small child at home? It's different for women than yeah. it is for men. And you were a young mother. What was that part of it like for you? And what advice would you give to moms out there who are really trying to shine in their industry, but sometimes people can have some type of preconceived notion? Yeah, you know, I was. I was a teenage mom. I had my son at 18. And I think for me, the, the biggest advice that I would give to women is that having children is not a handicap. Like you're not handicapped, you're not, you're not unable to do something. It doesn't put you at a disadvantage. And you have to be confident in the way you show up in the fact that you're a mother to whoever you're working with. You have to make them comfortable with mm -hmm. it. And then again, it goes back to if they're not, then you have to make some decisions. We do live in a world where people still view, you know, women with children, women who are pregnant. I have a woman on my team that's pregnant. I'm so excited about it. And I'm a, I'm a wine brand owner. Right. You know what I mean? I'm like, we're having a baby, you know? I'll take so, that for you. Yeah, I'm like, give me the wine. I'll take it. And so I think for me, it's like, it's the real world. Mm -hmm. Women have babies. And imagine if 
when women were pregnant or having babies, we didn't work. We right. got to stay home and do nothing. What <laughs> would the world be? So, And by know, the way, having a baby is never staying home and doing nothing. Yes, <laughs> it's a job, you know. So I think for me the advice would be you have to get very comfortable with the fact that you are a mother and embrace it. I think sometimes our discomfort also makes people uncomfortable. They don't really know how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So you just have to show up as you are. Right. So I'm I'm so grateful that I became a mom. Um, you know, at the time it seemed really, really difficult, but um, it's been one of the things that have really fueled me and it's allowed me to connect with young women because I'm able to say to young women, you're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. You just got to figure it out. Keep your head down and figure it out. So it's part of my story. All right. And then when I first met you, you were working with Hennessy. Mm -hmm. And we actually did some events together. Okay. And I always tell people this story of just being in a meeting with Ingrid and realizing that I could just shut up. <laughs> and Ingrid could do all of the talking because you really know your business. And one thing that I love is how comfortable that you are because of the knowledge that you have in your mm -hmm. industry to be able to talk to anybody about what it is that you're doing and the confidence that comes with the fact that you have knowledge about it. And you're always trying to further yourself and your education. What are some things that you've done to make sure that you're really comfortable to be in those spaces and to further educate yourself? Yeah, I mean, I think for me, especially where I am now, I made sure and I immersed myself in the winemaking process. I spent a lot of time with winemakers. I spent a lot of time with founders. I mean, you're one of the people that I oftentimes will ask, like, what is it like to be fully in this entrepreneurial space? Because I had been in corporate America for a while. And then I would say specifically on the team, going and finding someone who I really respected to be our SOM, right, who could really talk about the technical pieces of wine. And so for me, I would say... Um, it's really making sure that you just immerse yourself. I did something a year ago or two years ago that also um, was a bit a bit of a stretch for me. I went back to school. <laughs> I went to um, the Harvard BEMS program, and it was so transformational to be there, to be amongst people who initially I was like, am I supposed to be here? And literally I was like, you are right where you're supposed to be. So I think it's always getting yourself a bit uncomfortable to go seek and connect with people and just increase your knowledge about everything. Yeah, in that class, I think, I know Mr. Easy was in your class. Mm -hmm. We just had him on the show. Who were some other people that were in that course? Tiffany Haddish was in that course. <laughs> Dirk Nowinski. That's amazing. Allie Love, who I adore. Yes. Um, I mean, there were just some incredible fo folks. Um, Clarence Seedoff, who was a legendary soccer player, football player. Um, I mean, I was sitting in a room like, of just brilliance and the professor Anita is also just I mean she's incredible and so they've become part of my network part of my family they're so excited about the wine and actually in some of the campaign images for the wine one of my classmates from Harvard offered to to be in the shoot she's a model Misa Chen uh, and she looks amazing, by the way. She's beautiful. All right. And so let's discuss this wine, I Best Wines, because this wine is from South Africa. Yes. I don't think I've ever had wine from South Africa before. So what inspired that? Yeah. And where, because normally we see France, mm -hmm. you know, we see, um, where else do we see wine coming from? Napa. Like, yeah, Napa Valley. Um, Italy, um, Chile, New Zealand, and now South Africa. Yes. And the truth is South African wine has been around. For over 200 years it's not some new thing that we just discovered but many of us just discovered it and so even for someone like me who's been in the business for many many years I discovered South African wine five years ago mm -hmm. and I was shocked I was like how do I not know about this and so part of my purpose with I Best Wines is to really shed a light on such a beautiful wine region and such a under I think represented wine region there's so much incredible wine coming out of South Africa there's incredible winemakers and and the region is just breathtaking the same way that people travel from all around the world to go to Napa mm -hmm. There are people that travel to South Africa, obviously, but we want more people to travel to South Africa and experience the wine region. And until you do, I Best Wines <laughs> is going to transport you there. <laughs> yeah, we're going to transport you um, um, to South Africa because it's really a special place. It has my heart. And I want to be clear, this is not just a brand that you white label that somebody came to you and said, put your name on this, we're going to market this. You actually went to South Africa and basically lived there and I wanted to come visit you so bad, but I was starting this show. Um, so I was developing this, so I couldn't. But what was that process like? Because we a lot of times see 
you know, celebrities align with brands, people align with brands, but they may not necessarily have gone through this process. Yeah, it was, it, it, it required a lot of courage. It required being okay, being alone a lot, right? Because I did all but move there. I was there for the last two years a lot, mm -hmm. um, more than I was at home. It also required for me to seek out family and community there. And people embraced me. And so I would say, for me, um, it's been one of the best times of my life. It made me stretch myself. It made me understand why I really do view myself as a global citizen. Yes, I'm, I'm happy that I'm, I'm a black woman from America, but I'm even more happy that I've been around the world and I've been able to do cool things like launch a wine from South Africa. And something like this is not... Um it's not inexpensive to do it. Actually, the travel, finding a place to stay, the bottling, the packaging, the samples, all of those things cost money, yeah. right? So this also required you to make sure that you invested in yourself. Mm -hmm. And how scary is that? It's very scary. You know, I think usually what happens is a lot of people have great ideas, they have dreams, and they just don't go. And the difference between me and someone else is that I was like, it's time to go. Mm -hmm. It's time to do it. I am really fortunate that I made great business decisions in my life. I re invested in real estate. I've invested in art, stocks. Um, and I was able to lean back on those things in order to launch the brand. I also have a good reputation. Mm -hmm. And I think your reputation is equally as valuable as the money in your bank account. Right. Because you can call people, you can lean on people. And, and that's what I've been able to do. But I have fully funded this myself. And it was it's not been a cheap cheap venture at all. It's it's very expensive to produce a wine brand. And when we're talking about expenses and networking and leaning on people, you have your team here. Yes. And I think this is another really important part of the story, right? Uh, the team, because I already know that this is going to be something that anybody would want to be involved in on the ground level. But I would love for you to just introduce your team so people who are watching can actually see who your team is and how intentional you were about who you chose to yes. work with. Yeah, it's really special for me to have my team. And this team is when we get to me. drink, guys. Yes, and we Except get to drink. For... <laughs> <laughs> Except for mom over there. Uh, but it's so, it's so. I'll tell you, everyone knows. I was like, guys, we're doing the Angeli show. They're like, what? I'm like, we are doing the Angeli show. <laughs> and the reason why I think it's so important is because people don't build things alone. They build things with other people. And whether it's your friends who you're able to lean on and call, like what the relationship we have, or just women who like believe in you, which are the women that are on my team, and I appreciate them so much. So we have Anna, who I call the architect. Hey, Anna. That's my new name for Anna, is the architect. Oh, I got it today. Yeah. I said, Anna, do you, I said, Anna, do you like that? She goes, I do. I like it. Anna, the architect. But what it, but what it really means. You guys are like a means, rap group. Yeah. We are a rap, we are a rap group. Um, for me, what it really means is like, I had this dream in my head and my heart for years. And it was my little cousin at one time that was like scribing for me. I was like, help me get this out my head. But then when I really decided to go, it was Anna who I was like, hey, this is the thing. Like, can you help me? And yesterday I was like, architect it. Mm -hmm. So she's the architect. And then there's Chanel, which because this is my own money, I just mentioned that. I'm going to mention it again. I funded <laughs> this with my own money. Um, you need someone who is really, really solid when it comes to just modeling and business building from a from a model perspective how do we make money from this thing how do we make your money last so that you can even get to this point where we, we are launching the brand today and so chanel has done that she so she's she's a she's a fine i gotta get she needs name. a nickname wizard. wizard yeah she's like a financial yeah. wizard um but she really is and thank you so much because you've made my two dollars feel like Two million dollars, and Ingrid um, loves Chanel. By the way, just yes. to put that out so there, then so then it's easy. I'm like Chanel, Chanel, and Chanel. Chanel. Yeah. <laughs> I do, I do. And then there's there's Rachel, who I always say is she's really the foundation of the brand. She keeps us all connected. She keeps us communicating. She also just keeps my head on a swivel. Mm -hmm. So literally, I. 55 times a day. I'm like, Rachel, I'm supposed to do what? Or, you know, so she really is the glue. And I think a lot of times people think whether it's finance or the architect are the glue. It's actually the person that at the brand manager level is making sure that we are all doing our part to keep things going. So thank you, Rachel. Um, Rachel needs your name is, too. Yes. Rachel the glue. 
Rachel the Glue. Yeah, we are a rap group for real. And then there's Grace, who I have been a big I admired for so long on social media. Um, one because she's gorgeous, but really because she is a psalm. And I was like, she's a psalm. She's a mom. She's a, you know, like the I was like, mom, oh, she's a psalm says. mom. I was like, I was like, Anna, we need her. Like I literally, I put the architect on it and I was like, get her. And and so I just had such admiration for Grace. And again, I think it goes back to women can be so many things. Grace is a model. She's also a psalm. She's also a mom. She's also and a for child. And people don't know what a psalm is, sommelier, what is that exactly? And what does Would that take? Like Grace, if you want to come. Come on, because this is your expertise. Yes, I want. I want to get it. Oh, you have to come, come this side. I'm gonna come around. Okay, yeah, come around. Come around. <laughs> this is Grace, y'all, and that's our baby. This is a team baby. Because I feel like we've been seeing movies and things about Psalms a lot more lately. That's what kind of put me on, but I still don't know what it takes. Yeah. So, yeah. and I respect it. So I want you to tell it so that we don't mess it up. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. It's funny because, like, the technical answer would be, you know, we are wine professionals and we serve to taste. So we make sure we can translate what you think or what you feel you want to drink or taste in your gastro experience. And then we translate that into what technically is going on in the wine. So, you know, some people say they want, like, they don't want fruit. Like, they don't want it to be sweet. And usually they just mean that they don't want a lot of, like, apricots peach like melon pineapple they don't want fruit really really like say like sweet smells in the wine right and mm -hmm. so that's our job to translate that if you want something savory like if you want something that's going to go with your meat we're talking about things that have spices or tannins and so like you don't need to know all that i'll i'll, I'll translate that for that's you. your okay <laughs> yeah okay yeah. perfect i yeah. love it and that does take a lot of training yes so that's not an easy yeah, an it easy does. thing and to it's achieve. Super important I, for me, anyway, as someone who's been, for the most part, celebrated as a marketer and now a wine negotiant, to have someone who, from an education standpoint, and and Grace was being very humble. The amount of study mm -hmm. that Psalms have to do, the amount mm -hmm. of sheer study, um, is not for the faint of heart, and it's why not a lot of people are Psalms. The beautiful thing is that we're starting to see more and more black and brown people. I was going to say, so do you know, and I just want to talk about just even owning vineyards and wine companies, like what percentage, I don't know if you know this number yeah. at all, but when you look in this space and from what you've seen, you know, is it something that is still not a very diverse field? Can no. you give us any insight into that? Yeah, it's 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 not. I mean, it's less than a percent, I believe. Less than one percent? Yeah. Of our our of black and brown people own vineyards, own wine brands, are producing wine brands. It's there is a very very small percentage. Wow, it's changing. Mm -hmm. It's changing, and it will continue to change. And that's why people like myself and Donna from Lafrette Rose and the McBride sisters uh, are doing the work that we're doing. Right to say like this is for us. We can be in this industry too. I talk about that a lot because I think for a long time, black and brown people just didn't see themselves in wine. And they didn't. Right. They right. didn't see themselves. And so now you're seeing yourself through me, right? And so, um, but it's also a very expensive industry to be a part of. Mm -hmm. This is not something that you can just wake up tomorrow and do without, like, really spending the time to, to map it out and model it out, which is why Chanel's role was so critical. Ultimately, listen, the pack is beautiful. We're so proud of it. The wine is exceptional. The region is needs to be celebrated, and it will. But the wine and what it costs to do all of this right is I is mean, an investment it is an investment <laughs> and that is why and you've been you working know, for t over 20 years to get to this point to get to this point yeah and if you look at what wealthy people invest in they invest in wine mm -hmm. like wealthy people that's why they have wine cellars and why they spend the money they spend because wine is an asset and so for me i also want people to just look at this as a real story and asset building. This is my asset. So from concept to where we are now, where you're launching this mm -hmm. today, by the way, you can go ahead and pre-order that on Reserve Bar. Yes, ReserveBar.com. Um, how long did this process take for you to get to this point? So two years. But I always say it's been in my head and my heart for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And I do think you have to sit with things. Like you typically just don't think of something and then you have to sit with it. So it's been in my head and my heart for a long time, but two years, which really isn't a long time. 
Um, it's it's felt like a long time, and I've had people say, "When's the wine coming? When's the wine coming?" And I'm thinking, "You go try to launch a wine and see how fast <laughs> you do it." You know, but um, but two years, and it's been two of the best years of my life. And even though I've slept the least I've ever slept, I've spent a lot of my money. <laughs> I, you know, have seen very little of my family who I adore. Um, it has been the best time of my life um, because there's something about unlocking your courage. You know, when you yes. unlock your courage, you just feel so good. You feel so free. And it's a lot of sleepless nights. I will attest to the fact that it'll be like 7 in the morning here and Ingrid's in L.A. It's 4 a.m. And she's texting me like, hey, I'm like, what is she doing up right now? <laughs> Right. I'm like, I'm not even awake. And I just woke up and saw a text message. But, you know, it is a stressful thing. And sometimes you do have sleepless nights. But the payoff, the reward can be so amazing. I do really have been staring at this wine because, honestly, this is my first time. Yes, it's your first time. It's Angela's first time. And I will tell you, Angela was the first person that I called when I decided that I wanted to resign from my my very big job that everybody was so excited that I had, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember calling and saying, I feel like I need to do this. And she was like, you got to bet on yourself. It's time to go. Like, this is the time. And so um, this is a special moment for me, too, because, you know, I've been saying, it's coming. She'd say, where's the wine? I'm thinking, here she goes. (laughs) Everybody want to know where the wine is. I understand the patience. Yeah. Yeah, It has to um, come with launching a brand and getting it right because you do want to make sure that you launch with everything as perfect. I mean, there's always things that will happen, but as perfect as you can control, you want to make sure that it's right. You don't want to rush anything ever because you're making a first impression and you were definitely back and forth testing things. I mean, I've heard of stories about flights getting, I mean, all kinds of things that life will throw at you, but you've been very resilient and, you know, persistent. And this is very well deserved and so important, you know, just a network of people that you have around you. If there's people around you that aren't adding um, to yeah. what it is that you're trying to do that don't believe in you, that aren't supportive, that you don't feel comfortable being able to share good and bad news with. And right. those are not the people that you need to have around you in yeah. your circle yeah. at all. It's just so important to make sure that, um, you know, the conversations that we have are these types of entrepreneurial conversations right. where we're talking about the future, investing in ourselves, making sure we have generational uh, wealth and things that we can pass down. So I'm ready. Thank you. I'm excited. Which one should we try first? Let's start with the Grace. Where do you want us to start with the white? white. Yeah, let's start with the white. That's what I thought. Dan, you're not having some wine? Okay. Come on, Dan. Come on, Dan. It's, okay, it's we're going to start with the white. So this is um, I Best Wines White Blend. It is Chardonnay, Chenin Blanc, and Sauvignon Blanc. I was very deliberate, and we were very deliberate because this wasn't something that I just did alone. But we were really deliberate in making sure that we wanted to do a blend because we want to show the breadth of wine coming out of South Africa. Okay. And so this is a great way to experience two beautiful varieties, excuse me, three beautiful varietals, one of which is kind of the crown jewel of South Africa. People really know Chenin Blanc from South Africa, but Chardonnay from South Africa and Sauvignon Blanc is equally as good. So that's the white blend. That's how you could tell somebody to just slap their name on a product, right. okay? Right. When they could talk about right. it like right. that with passion. Sam, mom, am I supposed to? <laughs> like do this how do we do this yeah okay i'm gonna make sure i'm doing this right just because you don't want to warm up the wine the wine itself you might want to hold it here oh that's the only thing okay see my little hot hand okay (laughs) (laughs) cheers cheers i'm so happy here's to the team cheers Cheers. lady i best wines y'all this is the white blend it's incredible i'm so excited oh this is delicious Mm, yay this is delicious i already know (laughs) This is amazing. And I want to tell you before I tasted it, I knew it would be amazing because Ingrid is a perfectionist and she does not play when it comes to where you stay, where you sit on the flight, the clothes that you wear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a lot, but that that is why we are here. Mm. It's good. It's really good. I love it. I'm so excited. And I'll tell you, for me, like every time I it really taste good. it, it like brings me back to certain moments in the process. And Anna was with me when we were like blending and she was architecting with me. And, you know, we would say, no, not this. No, not that. And then we got to a point where we were like, we need to let other people taste the wine. Like, mm-hmm. we don't want to just do this in a silo because I think people do that. Like, they, right. they, they build their businesses. They do their thing in a silo. And it's like, come on. 
like you're doing this to sell to people. Right. So you would want someone's point of view. And so it's really been beautiful to just watch us land on this white blend. Ooh. And um, I like that. And I'm so happy you got to try it. And, and so we're going to move. Wait, before we try okay. the red, I just want to say one more thing. All right. Now that you've launched, let's talk about your first purchase. Okay. Any clients that you've had mm. already on board? Can you talk about it yet? First purchase, like... First client. Yes. So my first sales call while in New York was with Virgin Hotels. Okay. And uh, someone that I knew from work that I had done in Miami, she used to be at a hotel group there. She literally sent me a message and was like, we need to meet. I'm ready to support you. I know whatever you're building is going to be amazing. So had a chance to meet with them. Yeah. And had a chance to meet with her, taste the wine. She was like, this is incredible and has committed to putting us at Virgin Hotels. So I'm super excited about mm-hmm. that. And I literally videoed the the meeting with her. I was like, you're my first sales call. <laughs> but, you know, it goes back to that question that you asked me, like, where did I start? Mm-hmm. And where I started was in a commercial marketing role. Right. And I had to go out with my wine bag and with my liquor samples, and I would taste owners and retailers and have to tell the story and so it's really special for me and I think anyone looking to build a business there can't be any part of that business you can't do right I agree with you you with know that. you have to know how to do all the things I heard the sales background that you have and how you've implemented that but I also heard reputation yeah. right when you made that first call and or she called you and said I know whatever you're doing is going to be great yeah. and those are things that we uh, talked about and then not only do you get your foot in the door you have to have a quality product right. you know you have the relationship you have the reputation the product better be amazing and this is amazing Thank now you. let's try the next one yes this is the red blend which I'm so excited about and I'll tell you a little backstory. initially um, we really just thought okay launch a red a white wine and then we'll launch a red wine and we were being very conservative right because I think you you approach things sometimes from a perspective of like, are you doing too much too fast? And then it was like, nah, we're launching both of these because they're amazing. And, you know, because my background is music and it's my first love, I really look at the white wine as like the A side and the red wine as the B side. So we're going to move to the B side. Okay, the B side. And, um, sometimes that B side hits, you know. <laughs> that B side. Um, so this is a red blend, the I Best Wines red blend. It's Cab, Shiraz, Petite Syrah, and Malbec. Okay. And again, the pers- purpose of blending all of these varietals, one is because I love them and it came out beautiful, but two was to really tell the story of the breadth of wine that's coming out of South Africa. And I think there's just a lot of people that you read the back label and it says Malbec and it's like Malbec, South Africa. And it's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's my mom's favorite wine is Malbec. So Okay, good. All right. Well, cheers. Cheers, Cheers, ladies. (laughs) I'm going to start using the word varietals too. I just learned that today. Isn't that a good one? (laughs) I love that. Yeah, this is so good, guys. I'm so excited. (laughs) I'm so happy you finally got to try it, taste it. I'm so happy that it's here. (laughs) You. Listen, I know, I know. This is your baby, for real. So, no, honestly, I wanted to bring you up here. And listen, I know, full disclosure, we are friends, like really, really great friends. Mm -hmm. But I would have had you up here regardless. You You know, just because of the work that you've been putting in in this business, you deserve to be uplifted and this does not disappoint. Yes. So how can people support iBest Wines? So you can support iBest Wines, obviously, launching today, pre-sale, on reservebar.com. And also, in a few weeks, we'll be selling directly on our site, iBestWines.com, which is which is an incredible thing for us to be able to sell direct to consumer. Um, and then we're just, listen, hitting the pavement. Just like I had my first sales call, we are going out, talking to folks, singing the gospel of iBest Wines. Mm-hmm. And for those people who like good wine and good stories and want to support good people, you're going to start to see it in the restaurants and bars and on the shelves. And really, for me, it's trying to grow the footprint of South African wine, most especially, I would say, in restaurants and at retail because you just don't see a lot of South African wine. I have a lot of uh, South African wines that are my favorites as well. So this isn't just about me. It's about South African wine in general. Um, Deserves to have full sections at the wine shops, just like Napa does, just like France does, just like Italy does. The wine is exceptional. Do you find that you've gotten a lot of support in your industry, even from people who you used to work with? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I definitely feel like 
people are very ex- supportive. They're excited. You know, one of the things I can say is I've never burned any bridges. Mm-hmm. There's not I, there's not anybody that I've ever worked with that um, I can't call. And if I can't call them, it's just it was meant for our season to end. It wasn't because there was something that happened. Right. Um, you know, I got a I got a voicemail from Puff yesterday saying. I'm so proud of you. Like this is this is what I love to see. And so it feels so good. Obviously old, you know, supplier friends and retailer friends, that's a lot of liquor sales talk. You guys are like what is she talking about? <laughs> but just old companies that I worked with, you know, the head of Hennessy uh uh Jasmine Allen reposted about mm-hmm. the wine. You know, things like that that people think, why would the head of Hennessy be posting about this wine? It's because it's all love. You know, and we're all here trying to build great things. I love that. Yeah. All right. Talk that talk. Yes. Miss Ingrid Best. I told you guys I don't have to say anything when Ingrid's around. <laughs> but again, you guys can go to iBest Wines. Yes. iBestWines.com. In a few weeks, we'll be selling directly. But right now, it's about ReserveBar.com. We gave them the exclusive pre-sale. We love what they're doing with um, Spirit of Change. They've really focused on brands that are owned by black and brown founders. And so we thought it would be great to um, to partner with them on our, on our pre-sale. So we're excited. I appreciate you. And I have a shameless plug. I want to come and co-host with you. Okay. <laughs> Look at Ingrid. All right. Comfortable in the... Listen. That's the red, that's already, the red blend. The red y'all. blend hit. And I'm going to follow up with her on that and make her do that. But I also told her on National Wine Day, yes. which is in May, I looked it up. She um, did. Yeah, she'll be up here for that as well. Okay, so good. I'm getting ready for this because, really, I just want her to bring some wine. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. But thank you so much, um, everybody, for showing up. I love to see this. I love the team. I love you, Ingrid. I love you, too. And I love this wine. And I love y'all. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. I best wines, y'all. <laughs> Cheers.